Hey, Teddy K here for the Best Buy blog, and in this video review, we take a look at the Google Pixel 4 and Pixel 4 XL, the latest flagships from Google that offer a few new features, an extra camera lens, and a little more. There was a lot of anticipation over the Pixel 4 with good reason. Uh, when you're launching your phone near the end of the calendar year, after everybody else has already launched theirs, as far as flagships go, of course, then you're gonna get some attention. But with Google, it's a little different because there already has been a bit of a heritage in making something good. Now, naturally, just like the previous Pixels, I don't know but the design choices here. I don't think that these are gonna be the, the flashiest of phones, although I gotta say I'm really, really liking the orange uh, color that they went with here, the Oso oh orange, as Google calls it. Uh, really, really nice color that you typically aren't gonna see on a phone or even on a case for that matter. Um, it's, it's like almost like a coral color, uh, but anyway, uh, there are three different colors, but that's besides the point. The, the main thing here is what the phone offers and whether or not it's as good as what the hype was suggesting even before it launched. So first things first, I don't know that people are going to like the fact that the fingerprint sensor is gone, but it is, and it's been replaced with a face unlock, which works, although I don't know that I felt comfortable with the fact that it works even when eyes are closed. Now this is something that Google has confirmed, so it's not something that I'm just, I've experienced myself, but it is something that Google has confirmed. Uh, that to me is a security breach that I'd rather not deal with personally, but we'll see if Google fixes that. I've never been a big fan of face unlock to begin with, so I, I'm, I'm being subjective here in that I, it's not something that I would have necessarily chosen anyway. If I had a choice between that or a fingerprint sensor, I would take the fingerprint sensor all, you know, all the time with a pin as a backup. So that being said, it's gone and I, and I, I already miss it from the Pixel 3, so it's a shame that Google didn't find a way to keep that in there because to me, I don't know, I don't have the data to back me up, but I feel like if most people had a choice, they might pick the fingerprint sensor first, but you know, I don't know. So there's that. So that's missing. Uh, I do wanna address also uh, the radar chip that is inside the phones, which uh, Google kinda hyped up as far as what's possible with it. Now, the idea here is that the phone sort of knows when you're close to it, so the screen already comes on as you're approaching it. That does work, and I actually like that part. So that part's fine but there's also what's called motion sense, the idea where you can sort of wave your hand uh, to skip a track, like in Spotify, or to silence an alarm. Uh, I've tried this many times, <laughs> and I never found any kind of consistency with it. I can see kind of where Google's going with it, but unfortunately the consistency is not there, and it ended up frustrating me a little more than I would have liked, so it's a feature that I ultimately turned off. So what is good then? I mean, I've already noted a couple things that are missing or not ideal, so what is good? Now the 90 hertz refresh rate on the screen, I thought was is great. Uh, if you're looking for a fluid sort of feeling, I know Pixel's already had that to begin with, but the 90, 90 hertz refresh rate makes it just a little bit even, just a little smoother, which is probably why Google calls it smooth display. So that is a feature that is turned on by default. I, I left it on because uh, I was more curious to see what effect it would have on battery life. I will get to that in a bit. Uh, but right now, the the 90 hertz refresh rate to me, uh, which you've, we've already seen on other phones, so Google's not the first to do it, but it is a good feature. I do like that a lot. Then, of course, we come to the camera. Now, the camera is a big, big factor, and of course, the big thing is that Google added a second lens. But it's not a wide angle lens or an ultra wide angle lens. It's a zoom lens. So it's a two times optical zoom, although there is a bit of a mix going on there with optical and digital zoom. So uh, if you remember from the Pixel 3, there was a uh, super res zoom, uh, which uh, allowed you to extract even more information despite the fact that you were using digital zoom in the phone. It actually worked pretty well and it's back here, but there's that mix with the optical. If you double tap, now you can't switch lenses just the way you would on other phones where you just kind of select it. It is there, uh, just you get to it by just double tapping. So when you launch the, the camera app, you double tap and then it's there. Uh, you double tap again and you go back to the standard wide camera, wide lens. Uh, this is an interesting move, I, I think, and I, I recognize that uh, it's been controversial uh, for the reasons that because everybody else is going with an ultra wide lens, that Google should have as well. I wish they did also, only because I do think that ultra wide is more ideal when it comes to certain situations. If you're traveling and you're shooting architecture and things like that, you're shooting you know, big vistas, you're gonna want an ultra wide lens, I think, in those situations. Now, I'm not a parent, but I imagine that if you're a parent and you wanna take photos of your kids, 
maybe from a bit of a distance, perhaps then the zoom lens is better. I don't know. I, I think it would have been nice. Hey, it would have been nice if Google just put both of those in there. Uh, that would have been great, but they didn't. So you're using the zoom lens in addition to the standard wide and the standard wide already had a, a narrower field of view than a standard wide on another phone uh, or any other phone really. Uh, that was always the case. Even the Pixel 2, Pixel 3 were like that as well. Uh, so even though it's all right, it's possibly not going to be as wide as some of the other phones that are out there. But either way, the phone takes amazing photos. So the, the photo quality is not the issue at all. Uh, Night Sight is awesome still and it adds astrophotography to the mix. I wasn't able to test that uh, because I, first of all, there were too many clouds in the sky, but also because you, you need to shoot with that in a tripod and ideally in a, in a really dark environment. So if you're in a big city where it's, you know, there's all kinds of light pollution going on, I don't, I don't know that the feature is going to work that well, but what it does is pretty incredible. I mean, to take a 16 second long exposure shot in a matter of seconds uh, is pretty incredible. So I'm curious to try that feature and see how it is. If it's anything like the photos that Google has shown so far, that's going to be pretty incredible. One of my favorite features of the camera was the dual exposure control. So phones generally allow you to control the brightness or the, the, the highlights of, of an image as you're about to shoot it but not the shadows. And the Pixel 4 does just that. It allows you to control the shadows as well. So there's a slider that shows up that where you can adjust that. It does really change the way an image can look. And if you're looking for something that's a little bit more bold or whatever it is that you're shooting, just play around with those features and you'll find that your photo can look really, really interesting when you play around with those. That is the one thing that is not going to be coming to the Pixel 3. A number of the camera features are coming to the Pixel 3 in a future update, but not that. The last thing I wanted to point out was the recorder app. So Google has live transcription on this and it's baked into the device. So you don't need any kind of data access for it. I used it and it's actually quite good. So if you're looking to record lectures or interviews, I think you'll find a pretty good accuracy on this. It's not perfect, of course, but it is pretty good. And uh, there was a bit of a glitch that I noticed when it came to transcribing long like 30 minute sort of you know 30 minute lecture or something like that uh i don't know if it was only me uh or if it was something that maybe happened i'm not sure but it was just a, a glitch that i noticed uh if it does exist and it is something that is an issue i'm sure google will probably patch that soon then we get to the battery now the battery life in the pixel 3 was not as good especially over time that it should have been for a phone of its caliber so far, I haven't had major issues with the Pixel 4, but yes, it is not as good in terms of battery life as other competing phones are. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, I did notice a difference if when I turn 90 Hertz off. So if that's a feature that you could care less for, turn it off and you will save a little bit of battery life as a result. I can't quantify how much, but you will. So to sum things up, the Pixel 4 is iterative. It, it's not a leap forward from the Pixel 3 uh, and certainly not what I expected it would be as far as that goes. Even on the camera side, I mean, yeah, it, it's there, but I mean, the, the lens, the standard wide lens is essentially the same as the Pixel 3. So it's not like Google changed that much, although on the software side they did, but some of those features are coming to the Pixel 3 anyway. The dual exposure is not, but that's one of the rare things that isn't. So the Pixel 3 now seems like, and even the 3a to be honest with you, seems like a an interesting alternative compared to the four. Uh, if you want the dual lenses and you are interested in motion sense, uh, you want the recorder app and you know, you just generally want something newer, the Pixel 4 is still a solid phone. It, it's not a spectacular phone in terms of, you know, what you might expect it to be based on the hype. Uh, but then at the same time, it's, it's, it's a serviceable phone. It's one of the best Android experiences you're gonna get on a phone anyway. So when you put all those things together, it's a solid device, but there are great alternatives from Google alone in the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3a. And that's my review of the Pixel 4 and Pixel 4 XL. For the Best Buy blog, I'm Teddy K. Thanks for watching.